Whether you're a beginner quilter or an advanced quilter, I think we can all agree that there's something elegant about the simplicity of a nine patch. To the untrained eye, it can look elaborate and difficult and very time consuming, but quilters know it's actually some of the simplest piecing that we can do. It's simple enough that you can just sort of lose yourself in the process and not think too hard about it and just enjoy the piecing. So I started this project just to use up some scraps I had from a quilt I made last year, um, the laundry basket quilts, mystery quilt to be exact. And um, I just wanted something simple, something I didn't have to think about. And then I found this panel in my stash. It had a bunch of motifs that are perfect for fussy cutting and it happened to fit in really well with the fabrics I was using. So I went ahead and went down a rabbit hole fussy cutting a bunch of things. And then I found other fabrics that were already in that collection that would be good for fussy cutting like this one. Um, I added this one in. I don't remember where I got that one or who made it. I want to guess it's Ruby Star Society, but I'm not sure. Um, this one for sure is Ruby Star Society. So anyway, long story short, I built my nine patches around my fussy cut squares. But quickly I realized that if I just used my scraps, I wouldn't get quite as big of a blanket I was, as I was hoping to get. So I added in the sashing, which added 14 inches to the width and the height of my quilt. And I added in cornerstones so that it would continue the pattern through the sashing. So here's a good look at the full quilt. It ended up being 62 inches by 62 inches. And it looks like it's warped right here, but that's just because my design board has bubbles and uh, is not perfect and it doesn't lay flat against the wall. So it makes my quilt look like it has bubbles. So you can tell that I went completely random and chaotic with my color placement here. Everything just landed where it landed and I didn't move things around uh, too much, just a little bit here and there. I mainly just paid attention to where my fussy cut pieces ended up. So that R Ruby Star Society panel fabric was, is every other block and then my other fabric is mixed in with that. It's pretty clear from this distance that the sashing added in this secondary pattern. And you know what? It is a lot, but I don't hate it. So sometimes I'm looking and I'm seeing the nine patches, and then other times I look and I see the crosses. And I think it's really interesting, um, but it definitely adds to the chaos and the energy of the finished quilt. Okay, let's talk fabric requirements. For the background fabric, you need around one and a half yards, and for your colorful fabric, you're going to need about two yards. And I just want to emphasize that this is um, a rough estimate, especially if you're going to be doing a scrappy quilt. So keep that in mind. If you don't want to do a scrappy quilt, I have some really good news for you. This quilt is very pre-cut friendly. You would only need one jelly roll or one layer cake, and both of which are going to leave you with um, leftover fabric. You could almost do two quilts out of it, just almost. You're going to be just a little bit under what you would need. You could also use three charm packs, and again, you just barely need three. I think if you did two charm packs, you could fill in with your stash pretty easy. I think you just need 33 extra squares. And then if you wanted to use fat quarters, you would just need seven. So you could use any one of those pre-cuts plus a yard and a half of background. As far as cutting goes, it is super, super straightforward. For your colorful squares, you would need 369 two and a half inch squares. For your background squares, you need to cut 256 two and a half squares. And then for the sashing rectangles, you're going to cut 112 two and a half by six and a half inch rectangles. And make sure when you're making your nine patches to reserve 49 of your colorful squares for your cornerstones, okay? If you make a scrappy nine patch, will you tag me on Instagram and show me some pictures? Because I love to see how people interpret patterns and how they use color and like which colors are their favorite and all of that good stuff. After you have cut out all of your fabric, you're going to make 64 nine patches and you can arrange the colors as precisely or imprecisely as you want. You just need to make sure that you have five of your main fabrics and then four of your background fabrics, not the other way around. After your nine patches are assembled, it's time to put them into rows and so you will have eight nine patches per row with a total of eight rows you're going to intersperse your nine patch rows with your cornerstone rows. So for your nine patch rows, it's gonna go nine patch, rectangle, nine patch, rectangle, nine patch, rectangle. And you're gonna end up with seven vertical rectangles on those rows. For your cornerstone row, you're going to have vertical rectangles and then your cornerstone, vertical rectangle, cornerstone, vertical, and then all the way down with a grand total of eight rectangles 
and seven cornerstones on each of those rows. So just to recap, there will be eight nine patch rows and seven cornerstone rows. And I think that's all you really need to know to make this uh, scrappy nine patch with sashing and cornerstones quilt uh, thing. <laughs> I hope you make it, I hope you have fun, and if you do, don't forget to tag me in your photos because I really, really want to see what you do. Thanks for spending time with me today, quilters. If you want to support this channel and help me buy supplies and materials for future videos, please visit my Buy Me A Coffee page linked in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss upcoming videos. And I'll see you again real soon. Bye!